guys, it's time to talk about what I finished for the rest of July. Hey guys, if you are new to my channel, welcome to the book path. I'm Nicole, and if this isn't your first video, thanks for sticking around. Um, excuse the hair, I am feeling <laughs> a little on the lazy side today. Um, so we just didn't want to hassle with any sort of hair, whatever. Um, this month, obviously I know I did like my mid month of what I was doing for the Every Romanticy Challenge. Um, how did that keep going for the rest of the month? Also, we had final book support group and basically by the end of it, I knew that it really, it just kind of wasn't worth it to me to do a separate, um, wrap up for the final book support group and then try to do another one considering like I was kind of stuck on one book for a while and it was for both so I was like ah, I'll just do it and we'll put it all together and in, in the monthly wrap up and so that's just kind of what we're doing now um so basically um we'll go over what I did for final book support group um and the romanticy challenge after we left off last time and so basically I think for um, every romanticy, like as we left off, I said that I was kind of listening to the Woven Mark by Megan Linsky while I was trying to tackle the Claw and the Crown. And um, I ended up DNFing both of those. So the Woven Mark, um, I got maybe like four chapters or so into it before I DNF'd it. It really wasn't that far in, but I just wasn't driving with it. Um, the the voices weren't what I had matched to the characters in my head um not any fault of the voice actors it's my that's my thing that's one of the reasons why I can't really do um like romance audiobooks is because everything sounds different in my head than what it does with whoever whoever they've hired um so that was kind of a big thing for me um some of it was really weird because I get that it was supposed to be more YA, but there was excessive like YA speech, I guess you do, which is fine. I mean, it fits, but it was just a little much where you're in this kind of fantasy world, but you have these kind of wolf shifters, like just really, I don't know. Like, it, I mean, they were teenagers. That's all I can say. They were teenagers. The stuff coming out of their mouth was teenagers. And it was just kind of like, I couldn't take them seriously. And then on the other side, the female character, um, she started off seeming kind of fine, but then what was interesting is she would speak as if she was a teenager, which fit. And then all of a sudden, like, she'd throw out these big words and I can't remember what the word it was but it was to to um identify the the snowflakes that were falling around her um and like the size comparisons or, or whatever it is and I was like what the heck like I understood what the word was although like I said it escapes me it's been a while um but it was just weird because all the way up until this she was just speaking like a regular like what you would think a regular teenage girl would use and 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 the and the wording she would use and the way she would speak and it fit the character and then all of a sudden she started to drop these big like SAT type words that didn't fit with her build up to this point and I was just like this is just and then and then like there's an incident that happens with the female character and just kind of how she treats that it incident was a little like I get it but it just it just wasn't I, I wasn't caring I wasn't pulled along I was like I don't care for either of these characters I don't care for the voices um the female character's voice did match a little bit better um in my mind than what the male character did once again that's no fault of the voice actors whatsoever that's just that's a me thing. Um, so for me, I just didn't want to keep listening. I was just done with it, didn't care. And so I DNF'd that one. I figured um, I, I have other books that I will try to make up for for the Faded Mapes prompt um, as well as, uh, I, don't, I don't know about audiobook. I think I might just do the audiobook as, hey, I attempted it. <laughs> We're going to cross it off. Um, and then as far as the Claw with the Crown, I DNF this, I got like 300 pages into it. Okay. I made a dent. I made the effort 
and I just could really not care about any of the characters. Like I started out kind of doing it, but I, um, I felt like the reigning theme song for this book was Katy Perry's Hot and Cold because that's how I felt like every character was going in this book. They would say things, they would have this kind of um, mental uh, fortitude and, and the way they wanted to do things and the way they wanted to change. And I was like, okay, great, this is gonna be great. And then something minor would happen and they'd like start second guessing themselves. And then they'd find the fortitude again, but then they'd second guess themselves. And it was just very, very wishy-washy. And it wasn't just one character. This was the main female character. This was um, the kind of prince that she was kind of supposed to be in a, in a love triangle relationship with. Um, this was also the bodyguard that was, you know, going with her. And I understood the bodyguard being wishy-washy because that kind of felt like part of his development as you're sent to um, seek revenge on these people and now you're second guessing if you wanna complete that revenge or not. That made sense. Um, the fact that it happened like two or three times was a little like getting annoying. The main character girl was just, her whole thing was I wanna be free. Um, she's trying to plan her escape. And then all of a sudden, because she's starting to be intimate with her bodyguard, she's like, oh, well, maybe I don't want to run away again. And that for me was like, I'm sorry, what? Like, you don't like, she's going to be married. She's, she's betrothed to like her best friend, right? And her best friend wants to give her her freedoms. He hates what's going on, right? Most people won't really mind if, if you're going to be forced to marry anybody, it, you'd be a little bit happier with it being your best friend. Now, granted, obviously this, you know, what she's going through, I don't wish on anybody. And, and that is the premise of, of what's kind of going on. And I see reasons why she's fighting against it, even if it is her best friend. But it was just kind of like, to me, that relationship wasn't as bad as it could have been. It started feeling like maybe it could go because the Prince character was being a little wishy-washy with his affection for her and wanting to seek revenge using like the other girls. But, and I might get hate for this and I'm sorry, I kind of saw his point because he's been in love with her his whole life and she knows that and she's kind of been playing him the hot and cold. And he's kind of gotten mixed signals from her and he's trying at some point to give her the space, but he's also knowing what has to happen. And so it's like, I get his kind of point as well. So it was just like, all these characters just were getting so wishy-washy and everything's going on. And you start having things kind of get to a point with maybe the plot line, but it just didn't feel like the plot line was developing as much as it needed to. It didn't feel like these characters were really kind of, uh, learning or growing or anything in their in their past throughout the story and I'm like I could understand if this was 50 pages in but we were like 300 pages in we were like two-thirds of the way into the book and nothing I felt was really happening to make me root for any of these characters to make me feel for any of these characters like I just didn't care about the characters. I didn't care about the world. It didn't care about the, the like, I just wasn't caring. And I was like, you know what, if I'm not caring at this point, do I really want to spend, like, even though I've read up to 300 pages, do I want to finish like the last 200? And I was just like, mm, no. Um, so, I mean, if it did get better, you know, great at just for me, it wasn't working. And I just, at this point, I'm trying to be like, um, do I really want to push myself to, to read all this or do I want to kind of move on to something that might provide better enjoyment? Um, once again, if you hear the kids in the background, kids are on summer break, they go back to school in like two or three days. Um, so it will be a little bit quieter during the videos. <laughs> um, I am ready, <laughs> love my kids, but I am ready for the clean house. I am ready for a little bit of quiet time. Um, and I think the kids are ready to go back. They've been ex excited to see their friends and their teachers. And so I think everybody's kind of ready to get back into the school year. Um, so you will still hear them running around. It's morning, energies are, you know, everybody just woke up. So that's part of the reason why I ain't doing my hair. We just woke up, I'm like, I put a little bit of the face on, we're going with it. 
And so at this point, that was kind of where I left things before starting off with the final book support group round 13. Did I get everything accomplished for round 13? No, but I did do good. So we'll get into that. So basically first up, I ended up doing my final book for final book support group. And that was the House of Ether and Light, or Light and Ether. I'm sorry, House of Light and Ether by Leah Stone. This is the third book, and I think it's called the Guild series. Um, this once again is the story of Fallon, who has been cursed to um, feel pain whenever she is touched by another human be being. Aside from um, the guy that she loves, I think it's Arian, is his name. And you have the magic world where it's kind of ranked in tears by those who have magic, those who don't have magic, um, but come from magic families and those who just don't have either. Um, you have Fallon trying to, you know, kind of use her influence to kind of change the workings of how this is going on in the world. The world is kind of stacked against her because you find out that her mother is a villain who about like right around the time of her birth, just started going, you know, nasty towards the rest of the world, seeking vengeance for, you know, the curses that were laid upon her. And she just kind of went evil. So everybody thinks Fallon's going to do the same. And so she's kind of persecuted against, prejudiced against, all that stuff. Um, but she is able to build kind of this small group of friends around her. And she keeps time after time having to prove herself to the queen and the realm that she is not going to end up like her mother. She's fighting against her mother. She is helping the realm to fight against her mother. Um, obviously, and I think it was book two, you find out some not so nice news about where Fallon may be heading. And so she's trying to find ways to fight her fate as well as trying to accept it and and find out what's going to go on um while you know feeling love for arian and her friends and her family um there was a scene in this that i ended up getting choked up on she's given a kind of potion that allows her for five minutes to be able to have human touch so she can hug her friends she can hug her father um and it was just a very emotional kind of scene because you're having this buildup of how all her friends see her and how they care for her. And then the, and then um, her her two dads, because there you go, that's a little bit of a spoiler. You'll find out about that. Um, but her biological father and then the father that raised her and kind of their take on things. And, and it was just, it was emotional. I did get choked up. I didn't cry, but I did get choked up. Um, I ended up giving this four stars because I did like it. I've liked the story. I've liked the characters. I've loved the little uh, Raven sidekick that she has. I've I've loved him um, so much. Um, and uh, his name's Yonrek. He is just, I love him. He's so cute. Um, but I felt like there were, when you got to the pinnacle moments, I felt like there were parts of this that were really rushed. Um, there's like kind of a camp scene where they're questing and they're having to go and compete against another school. I would have liked more of that. I would have liked it to be a little bit more drawn out. I would have liked the challenges to have been a little bit more drawn out because it felt very compact and very quick that I felt there was more there to tell. Um, also towards the end, when you get to the pinnacle moment of like the final fight or showdown, I felt that that was also very quick and I would have liked to seen that stretched out a little bit more. Um, as well as kind of the aftermath of what happens to the happy ever after ending on this. Um, that being said, it was still an enjoyable read. It was still an enjoyable trilogy. I do recommend it. It is a YA um, fantasy. There's not really, it's like a YA spice level. Like I would say a new YA spice level, you know, it, it's got some touchy feely moments. It's got some kissiness, but I'm um, like, as far as like more than that, no. Um, I think there might be some language in there, but it's it's not really bad. I actually enjoyed it. And um, like I said, I recommend it. So that was my final book. Did finish that prompt. So we did end up completing that. So then after that, I ended up picking up volume two of, I'm gonna, I always <laughs> correct myself on this one, Himotu Umaru-chan volume two. Um, this once again is like the daily slice of life um, manga about a girl who, is seen as perfection in the public world, but in the private world, she's kind of a female otaku, very much into video games and anime and all those types of things, eats a bunch of like snacks. And this is just kind of her slice of life story about how 
she kind of hides this from the world and how she really is kind of a little pest to her older brother who's kind of the one raising her. Um, that it, it's just fun. It's feel good. It's cute. Um, just all the little things that kind of go through, have their little moments. You get a little chuckle out of it. Um, I ended up giving this one four stars again. Um, it's just one of those cutesy fun ones to read. And so I will continue to read that series as needed. Um, it's not one I feel a rush to. It's just one that's just, like I said, it's all in good fun and it puts a smile on my face and it's, you know, nice. That one was the manga um, novella short story prompt for final book. So um, we did go ahead and complete that one as well. Um, next up, I ended up picking up my continuation station book and that was um, Beautiful Vengeance by Katie Robert. I ended up giving this one three stars. I think this might be the lowest one in the O'Malley's uh, kind of mafia series. Um, in this one, you have Sloane who is I think she is the third youngest. Um, she had a younger brother who, um, spoiler, sadly passed in the first book. Um, and then she thinks, I think there's still one younger sibling. Um, but anyway, she's the one that's kind of just been very quiet, um, very docile, and she's wanted out. So this is her chance to get out. Her brother, um, T, helps her get out. She's in hiding 3,000 miles away from Boston. She's out in like, I think it's near Seattle um, or Washington, somewhere around there. And you find out that her next door neighbor is kind of like this grumpy older guy. Um, and she just kind of is alert. Like she's got this allure to him. Um, she gravitates towards him, but at the same time, she is like repulsed by him. <laughs> and he secretly, um, has ties to all these uh, mafia families in the Boston area and he, you find out that his family was basically decimated by um, one of the uh, one of the families and he is taking revenge by going after the other members of this family and um, which happens to be the owner of the house that Sloan is staying in. However, they kind of get together and um, start to catch feelings. I ended up giving it three stars because I wasn't as emotionally pulled into the characters as I've been in the other books. Um, the plot line was a little bit weak. I am not a fan of the virgin trope. Um, and especially in this one, her abilities in an intimate setting are not one I would think many virgins would have. I mean, if you do, good on you. But if you know, you know, we won't get into details on that one. But it just the thing she was able to do right off the get go in this, because obviously it's a very spicy book, didn't make sense for the virgin trope. Um, the other thing is, is there is a pregnancy kind of trope aspect in here. And there are some situations that for the life of me, I would never, ever see anybody in their early stages of pregnancy doing um, so I could be wrong, but I, I've never come across it amongst like myself or anybody that I've known that has been pregnant. So I'm not one for the pregnancy trope, not one for the, the virgin trope. Some of the stuff wasn't making sense to me, um, as far as it being kind of realistic. Um, and the storyline, the, the way that they kind of catch the feelings for each other just felt a little bit more forced and not natural as comparison to the other characters in this series. Um, so that's kind of why I gave it three stars. Um, I did like the fact that you do see Aiden, who is the oldest in the O'Malley family, and Kira, who's the youngest in the O'Malley family. There were some scenes that make you wonder if the other people in those scenes are going to be the love interest for those two siblings, because there are two books left in this series because there are like, I think like six of the O'Malley siblings or something. Um, so I will still continue because it is still a good series. It's just, I think this is probably my least favorite um, in the series so far. Um, but I did finish it. So it was a continuation station over and done with. So after that, I ended up picking up one of my chonky uh, <laughs> tries for final book support group for the TBR vet. And for that, I ended up choosing The War of Two Queens by Jennifer L. Armentrout. This is book, I think book four in the Blood and Ash series. 
if you know i loved this series i love Cass. um that does not change i love Cass. i love kieran i love poppy and honestly i was surprised and i like fangirled so bad when i i, I didn't know in the book that this was going to happen but i got to like chapter one and there's a sketch of Cass and I giddy like a little girl because I he's been my favorite and he's gorgeous and um but not only that I did scan and they had on the back part you had Poppy now I don't know if this is supposed to be Kieran in wolf form if it's supposed to be Delano um who's kind of always been in wolf form at her side um I also loved the fact that midway through the book you get a sketch of Kieran in human form and I'm like, he's good looking. I love, like, Kieran has been growing on me and I've been waiting. Um, if you follow the story, you know, it's one of those, if you know, you know, and you're, and you're kind of waiting for stuff to happen. But um, obviously this book picks up, I'm going to try to keep it as spoiler free as possible. Um, but Cass has been taken um, by the Blood Queen and you have Poppy trying to bring together the forces of the kingdom that she has just kind of taken over as queen um, to go and get Cass. Um, there are other surprises that you find out um, or that you have found out towards the end of the last book that are in this one. And you start to kind of find out what, who the, who the Blood Queen Illy really is in her relation to Poppy as well as other characters you start to find out a little bit more of what is the plan behind the Revenants and the Ascended and what is going on, um, all set to this kind of like war backdrop. There are battles going on, there are sieges going on. Um, there is a, There are some very uh, spicy scenes. Um, there was one, a long awaited one that uh, did happen. So I was very happy with that. Um, because I, I, like I said, I have been really, like, I've loved Cass for a good majority, like, since book one. Kieran started winning me over in book three, and, like, he really did win me over in this one. Like, I really did like him in this. But we have a new contender because, obviously, towards the end of book three, um, you get some of the characters from the Shadow and Ember uh, Light, and the Light and Flame series. Um, or is it the Flesh and Fire series? I can't remember the name of the series, but it's the, the Shadow and Ember Light and the Flame, you know, the, the kind of prequel series with Nyctos and everything. Those characters are starting to make their presence in this one, which was fantastic. Um, and you get to see a grown up or more grown reaver from that series because he's a kid in the other series and he's grown up in this one and i loved him i loved him he is great he is quirky he is fun he's sarcastic and and you know gorgeous as well um so he was just kind of like my you know just happy moments in this book um i ended up giving this one four stars um i think more of the four stars was just because there was a lot going on in this, um, a lot of information, um, a lot of battle sequences, like there's a lot happening, but it felt very drawn out. Like it felt long. This was like, I think it was 617 pages or something. It felt like 900. Um, it was good. It's just, it felt long and it took me a while to read because there was so much kind of going on. Um, so because of that, um, I probably would have wanted it to be maybe, dare I say it, like split into two smaller novels because it was just, there was a lot of information and a lot was going on and, um, or certain scenes should just not have been as long. Like a lot of the, the kind of planning scenes before battle, um, there were a few scenes that, you know, regarding like the crowns, um, and, and should they wear the crowns? So I was just like, this really doesn't matter. Like this part of the scene doesn't really matter. Um. So like certain things like that, you know, and then um, just like once they get, you know, once starts, stuff starts happening, there's a lot, there's like spicy scene after spicy scene after spicy scene, which like I said, I followed this book so much, so it doesn't bother me, but I think 
at the time that those started happening, I was already feeling that this was a long book. So I'm like, had there not been as many, would have been fine with me. I'm like, not to say they weren't great and they're nice and appropriate for their relationship and, and, and for their characters, cause they were. So like, it's one of those, like, I love it, but it was also kind of like, I was tired. <laughs> um, if that makes sense. But I really do love this series. Highly recommend it. I think if you haven't read any of this series yet, knowing that the final book in the um, kind of prequel series with Nyctos is coming out um, this or at the time I'm filming it, it's already August. So coming out later this month, I would recommend reading that series first, just because um, a lot of what's going on in there, you're starting to get teasers of it in these books. Um, so it can kind of maybe spoil those books for you. Um, plus I think it's great when you read the prequel series or you read something in, you know, timeline order basically, because once they started making their appearance in this and you know those backstories, you get the giggles, you get the happiness because you've been along for the ride. So, um, like I said, I did enjoy this one. I also decided, um, to use this for the Every Romanticy Challenge and um, make this the bodyguard romance book. Um, I know somewhere, I know I was using this for social media as well, and I can either use social media for The Claw on the Crown, even though I DNF'd it. Um, it didn't like partial fulfillment of prompt, if you will. And I know that it somewhere has been um, recommended on social media because um, it's just a great series. And I think that's actually how I first found out about it was it was recommended in another series um, or in another booktubers. Um, videos so I can still use that prompt plus even though um there's not there are bodyguards in this right so so you have Hawk in the beginning in the first book is the bodyguard you also have Kieran who is her bodyguard you have Delano who is um her bodyguard and there is you know like I said there's a little bit of touch of romance with Kieran in a relationship there but then you also have like I said Hawk has been her bodyguard um and then you know who hawk is so that kind of hasn't changed an element so i'm stretching it a little bit but we're going to do it because that's going to fulfill it um there were no micro tropes really that i haven't done that were in this one however we were able to cross off the vampires and the dragons because there are vampire type elements in this they call them the vampires or the ascended um, and then you also have dragons because you have Reaver and their dragon shifters and you have, you know, Nectus and he's, you know, dragon daddy. So, um, so that was basically what I ended up reading for the rest of the month. Obviously for final book support group, um, I took part in sprints. I did some self care, which was like, I think I did some under eye patches because my dark circles have just been, I've been turning into a panda. It's okay. Um, I know that I did, like I shared my TBR. So I did all of like the non-book prompts. Um, and then I did not get to the poll pick, which was the Crow Rider, sadly. So we will hold on to that one for another prompt at another time. Um, and I did not get to Blood Mercy, but I will have to get to Blood Mercy because it is one of my prompts for um, every Romanticy Challenge. So technically I'll be doing Blood Mercy at some point, but it's just, it's gonna be so delayed. It's not gonna matter if it's part if it's part of um, the final book support group. Um, I also obviously did not finish every romanticy. I blame the amount of DNFs I had to do because I could count them and continue, but I kind of don't like that. Um, so I'm trying to find other substitutions. So like I said, I'm using the War of Two Queens for the bodyguard and I did replace the two plus love inches, which was like, shouldn't have come when I DNF'd that one. I replaced that one with the Feather So Black. And then I think I'm going to do one of the Zodiac Wolf's books for the Faded Mates because they are that whole, the whole premise of that book is about Faded Mates. Um, and then I still have um, the Fox Glove King and Blood Mercy that I need to get through as um, the last two kind of books that were on the original list to get through, um, as well as I gotta find my pirates and my Viking books. So every Romanticy Challenge is gonna continue into August. August is going to be a very book heavy month. I think I've totaled it at like something like 20 books with um, what we're doing for the Quidditch readathon and Battle-a-thon and kind of the back 
log of what we've been having do for the challenge accepted jar and the magical um uh magical readathon the year in aurelium challenges like we have a backlog of books we need to get through so august is going to be a very heavy reading month um luckily the boys are going back to school so there will be a little bit more quiet we can clean house feel organized and then we are just going to sit on our butts and read <laughs> like that is just what it's going to have it is going to be reading sprint heavy i'm going to be joining probably as much as i can for those because there is a lot to read um so other than that let me know how july went for you let me know um kind of what your reading goals are for august if you haven't done so um if you just want to leave an email if you just want to leave an emoji to let me know you were here um leave something with like a summer i'll leave it up to you guys you know palm trees you know drinky drinks sunglasses fun stuff i don't care leave something just to let you know you were here um i hope everything is going well for you if you are uh getting ready for the back to school season i hope that is going well for you and not driving you crazy yet with all the back to school shopping and supplies that you gotta get because those lists are long and um other than that, if you're not going back to uh, school, you get still got another month to go or so. Enjoy the time that you have. Take in the sun. Get your, uh, you know, get your re relaxation in. Um, for those of you going back to college, take a breath. Enjoy it. Have a great school year. Um, and, you know, I just wish you guys the best if it's your first year back in any level school, whether it's middle grade, if your kindergartners are going for the first time, if your first year in high school, if you're first year in college, enjoy it, have fun, and I wish you guys the best. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.